Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, earlier this year, I went on the first UK press drives of the Cupra Born, and it was a car that impressed me a great deal. In fact, I'd go as far to say, I think it's probably the first press drive I've ever been on where I thought, I need to buy one of these. It really, really did tick a lot of my boxes. However, the car I drove then only had 204 PS and a 58 kilowatt hour battery. And we knew at the time that there was one with more power and a bigger battery coming, and it's parked behind me. So that is a Cupra Born V3 trim level, but it has 230 PS and a 77 kilowatt hour battery, which should be good for about 300 miles. So in this video, I thought I'd put that to the test. So what's my plan for this video? Well, I've already reviewed this car. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it in the top right-hand corner of your screen and also a link in the description of this video. So I'm not gonna do a review as such. I wanted to put this car to the test in a slightly different way. It's got more power and a bigger battery pack and a larger stated or estimated range of around about 300 miles. So I thought I need to go on a bit of a drive somewhere. Now, when we did the press drives earlier this year, we did them from GridServe in Braintree, Essex. And I remember when we were there, the guys from GridServe had said that they'd not that long ago opened up somewhere in Norwich. And that's quite a long way from my house. It's about 200 or so miles. So I thought tomorrow we'll drive to GridServe in Norwich. We'll top the car up with some electrons, have some lunch and then drive back again. The guys from Cupra delivered the car with about 90% charge. So I'm gonna stick it on my Zappi wall box overnight. So it's brimming with electrons and ready to go. And while we're going there and back, we can talk more about the car. Heads up in terms of spec, it's a V3 trim level. So exactly the same spec as I drove on the channel earlier this year. The color, this color is called Rally Red. I'm not a big red car fan as it happens. I would much rather have the blue, although I do think it's a handsome looking thing. And then in terms of price on the road, as spec, this particular press car is just a smidge over £42,000. I think it's £42,125. Now, I'll always get comments now saying how expensive electric cars are, and I appreciate they are. However, I think £42,000 for a car of this spec and performance is, is really good. Don't forget, though, there are plenty of different ways to buy electric vehicles. There's a number of salary sacrifice schemes where the monthly payment is taken from your salary at source, so you get tax benefits. And often those will be lease deals, so you're effectively paying that amount of money, and that includes things like maintenance and tyres and maybe even insurance. So they are worth looking into, and if your employer offers one of those, highly recommended. But next thing we need to do is get this car on charge, then we'll get going. Um, I am going to pick up a mate of mine on the way, uh, Ben. He's a young driver. He's going to come with me, want to keep me company. But I also wanted to get a young driver's perspective of the current car market. You know, we've got all of these cars coming to market within the next couple of years. They'll all be electric. And I'd just love to know what younger drivers think of that. So I'll just quickly shuffle some cars around, get this on charge. And I've got to give a massive shout out to Cupra. That number plate is genius. Good morning all. Oh, now, are we ready for an adventure? I have just unplugged the car. It has 100% charge and it's showing an indicated range of 316 miles, which I think should be very interesting. Um, so I need to go and pick up Ben first. He lives 23 miles away. And then from there, I'll plug in grids of Norwich. So I think it might be a little bit more than 200 miles, um, but we'll see when we get to Ben's house. But the other thing that's happened today, which is weird, there's this moisture falling from the sky. No idea what it is. I think it might be called rain. Don't get me wrong, it's good that it's raining, but it's just weird to see it. We've wanted it for so long, the reels will be sucking it up. Now, a couple of things just to explain the plan for this journey. I've plugged my phone in, I'm gonna use Apple CarPlay a few comments on social media when I posted pictures of this about the infotainment system in the Bourne. I actually don't think it's that bad, but
but I would always use the Apple CarPlay anyway. I've actually used a wire to connect my phone, although it did give me the option of wireless Apple CarPlay. But I always find on a longer journey, if you're using wireless CarPlay and a wireless charger, your phone tends to get a bit hot. So I'm using the cable. And then the last couple of things, um, brilliant head-up display. Um, and I've put the car into the Cupra mode which probably isn't the best thing to do if I'm trying to do an efficiency run, but this isn't an efficiency run. I wanna just see how far the car goes and what the efficiency's like when I just drive it normally. You know, I don't wanna to have to eke out the last electron to give me the last mile every time I get in a car and do a long journey in an electric car. I just wanna go and drive. Now, I'm not gonna drive stupid, but I'm equally not gonna sit behind a bus or a lorry on the motorway and try and get their draft and be as efficient as possible. So I think on the way there, I'm just gonna stick it in, in the sporty mode, which is the whole point of having this car and tapping into the 230 PS and just see what that does to range. So let's see how we get on. Oh my God. Ooh, it's raining. Pouring. Now the new tube. This I'm is Ben. Ben. <laughs> uh, now, we surprised you a bit. Yeah, because your mum had no idea I was going to rock up today. No, <laughs> and he's like, I had no idea just either. Book you out for the day. She booked me out for the day last week. She told me you have to save this date. You cannot do anything. I've got people asking me to do stuff, but no. Oh, I've stayed true. Never mind. Good. Well, we're going to go to Norwich. Fancy that? Yeah. So so far we've done thirty-two. I uh, know oh twenty-one miles. Let me just plug in ways, and then we will work out how far we've got to go to go to Gridserve Forecourt in Norfolk. Here we go, 190 miles. And we got 285 miles of range. We should be all right with that. We should be fine, yeah. We're, we're rocking and rolling with that. Now, I really wish I'd had the camera rolling. Two reactions from Ben there. One, when I explained how much this car cost, you were... I was shocked, yes. Shocked at not how much it was, but, but how, how... How little it was. Little it was. Yeah. Because. 40 grand, the amount of people, oh, so much in electric cars, so much. But as you said, you know, a Tesla or, you know, they're all like 50, 60 grand. They, yeah. They're 41 grand for the, and they, this is the top spec one. So you can get a smaller battery or and a, and a, a less powerful motor and less kit for much less, you know, yeah. early 30s. And then the second one is you've never been in an electric car before. Never. <laughs> I've sat but in one, but it's never driven. You're the youth, you're the modern generation. Yeah. You're meant to be into like electric cars and stuff. I love electric cars. <laughs> I, I, my, I wanted my first car to be an electric car, but then, then I did see how expensive some of them are. But for like a first car, yeah. it's, if you know what I mean. They are, I do know exactly what you and mean. And then the, the second hand market's a bit different, especially because like, so you don't know whether the battery's still yeah. active at all. Yeah, no, I there's I did a thing I don't know, a while ago now with with a, a a second hand or a used electric car dealership. So there are oh, they are yeah, out yeah. there. I guess so many people buy them new and they lease them and that kind of stuff. You gotta search hard for them. You do, you do indeed. Are you alright mate? Yeah, but do, do you want thunder buddies? <laughs> we are driving through the biggest thunderstorm. We just had a massive strike of lightning just ahead of us. No, my life, I'll never get it on camera. But <laughs> the, it's pretty heavy rain. There's a lot of standing water. I guess we haven't had rain in the UK for, oh man, over I, a month, over a at month least there, yeah. over a month. So unfortunately the rain's now getting quite heavy. So it, there's just a lot of runoff off the fields and stuff. But it's a good test to drive a car in the wet. It's dealing well with the deep water. The yeah. aquaplaning isn't too much of a problem. This is a rear wheel drive car. Oh, rear wheel. Um, I haven't felt any kind of traction problems or traction issues. But yeah, we are. Let's let's see if we keep the cameras rolling keep, and get a thunder strike. Yeah, that would be quite cool. Mind you, it wouldn't be cool if it, I don't know. Driving an electric car <laughs> in the rain in a thunderstorm. Fully recharged battery if we get here. Like that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> that would be rapid charging. <laughs> we could go from 88% to 100% in like a nanosecond. Yeah. Uh, now, a couple of things we're talking about. So this has got the augmented reality um, head-up display, which is mega. When you are in uh, adaptive cruise and you come up behind a car in front, there's a little, a little line appears in front of the car on the wheels and it moves where the car is. Very, very clever. 
so you can change the distance. Yeah, you can make it shorter or longer. Wow. I've got lane depart departure, just had a little line up here in the middle of the road yeah. telling me to get back into my lane because I was drifting. <laughs> um, it's it's got some really clever tech. I am not a fan though of the steering wheel buttons, that one and that one. This yeah, one turns way. up the you have to oh. kind of stroke your finger over it, like down and up, rather Instead than pushing it. And and your your the, this part of your hand kind of keeps changing, changing the volume. Yeah, but I can live with that. I can live with that. So we've still got 119 miles to go. 66% of battery pack remaining and 189 miles of range. So we're doing all right. We're kind of, we're there, we're okay. The delta's reduced a little bit. Yeah, what have we got? 70 miles. Yeah. <laughs> that would be all right. There's no range anxiety in this car. Not at all. So, you might be thinking, why didn't I decide to see if, how far I could go on the car? Well, when you're living with one of these, ideally you want to keep the charge between 20% and 80%. Yeah. So really, you want to charge it before you get to, to 20%. It means that the charge stop can be quicker, mm -hmm. um, and it means you can be on your way quicker. So I'm kind of hoping that we get there at around about 20%. Yeah. We'll see. I think, I think we'll be... Very unscientific. I don't know. You're not sure. I'm not sure. So there's even jeopardy in the car. These I'm guys are meant sure. to be going. Oh, it's not going to get there. You're in the car with me, and you don't think I'm going to get there. Sixty-six percent. Yeah. And we've been going for uh, around an hour, yeah. I'd say. <laughs> and oh, uh, I have hope. I have hope. You've I have got hope. hope. We've still got. We've got loads of time. Yeah. Loads of time. Anyway, into the Blackwood Tunnel. So uh, seventy miles still to go. hundred and forty miles of range. 48%. I'm a lot more confident You're now. You're a bit more confident now? A lot more confident. There we go. Right, there we go. It is kind of coming down linearly, pretty much. So we had 300 miles of range. Well, just a bit more than that this morning, 100%. And we had about 145, 150 yeah. miles of range at 50%. So it's about, about right. And that, I think that 50 mile an hour zone definitely helped. Uh, that 50 mile an hour zone has helped a lot. Yeah. Now, we will report back on this when we get there. But interestingly, if we just look at the efficiency at the moment, I am averaging 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. And I think I think I can get that above four. So what I'm gonna do is on the way back from grid serve, I'm gonna put it in one of the more efficient modes mm -hmm. and see if we can get that that because I think it, this car should easily be able to do more than four. And when I, when it was dropped off to me yesterday, actually, the long term uh, the long term on that was more than four kilowatt, four miles per kilowatt hour. Well, we are one mile away, dude. Yeah. That's it there. That's that, it there. That is grid surf just there. We've got to go all the way round, all the way round the houses to get to it. But they're cleaning the sign just for us. Just for us, mate. Just for us. So, amazingly, my prediction is pretty much bang on because we are. On we have twenty-two percent of charge two. left. 65 miles still to go. Now, I've been in the car for like four hours, yeah. and we've still got six, I think that's wicked. I think that's really good. Yeah. So, we're gonna go on and um, get some charge. As I said, if you can, when you're out and about in your electric car, and you're using public charging infrastructure, the most efficient usage of public charge infrastructure is just staying in that uh, 20 to 80% yeah. window. Now, I might, I might go all the way to 100% and then we can just go home. Yeah, instead of having Otherwise, to, we might have to, if we did 80%, we'd then have to stop again on the way home. Which is that, do I stay? Or we could completely risk it, go the whole oh, way. We could, we, that would be good. Get back it? on 1%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I've got to drop you off first so we can get to your house and then run out. Yeah, we don't have a charger, so. Exactly. I could plug it into the wall. Yeah, we've got a three pin. It'll take like 15 years. <laughs> So, uh, as soon as these lights turn green. Floating into the parking space. Cool, right, so, let's just quickly check the stats uh, on here. Right, so we've done 211 miles, wow. four hours 20. We've still got 65 miles left. Pretty good. Pretty good. Average 52 miles an hour and 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. That's really good. It's pretty good, isn't it? So on the way home, I reckon we'll put it in one of the range extender modes yeah. to make it be a bit more efficient and see if we can beat that. But I think that's pretty good. Right, let's 
plug it in and go and get some food, shall we? Yeah. This is the charger. Plug it in. Contactless payment, so no app needed. This is a bargain. You are allowed to start charging. Excellent. Preparing to charge. Setting up communications with the car. <laughs> this is when you think, come on, car. Yes. Yes. So there we go. We'll see how, how quickly we can get some juice in. So we're up and running, we're charging. We're actually at the moment pulling 131 kilowatts out of this. Now that car's only meant to go up to 125 kilowatt charging, so we're actually doing better than the manufacturer's state. We're at 29% already. That's charging at something like 10 miles a minute. So it shouldn't take too long to fill the car up, but I need a wee <laughs> and I need some food. So we'll leave it charging and see how we get on. Well, that's good, 130 kilowatts charging. That's fast. So, settled in for a bite to eat. We're just saying, such a nice relaxing place. To, yeah. Cars charging downstairs, you come upstairs, there's a big M&S. Nice comfy seats, it's clean. Food's great, we're just yeah. tucking into a Costa, a high, high, <laughs> highly healthy Costa toasted sandwich. But for me, this is, this is what the future of public charging infrastructure needs to look like. It's a destination, I mean, yeah, we've driven here specifically, but you know, it means you can have some downtime. I'm quite happy to spend an hour here, chill yeah. out, have some food. And actually, the chargers downstairs, they're all up to 350 kilowatts, so they'll adapt to whatever your car can take. But, you know, that, that's rapid charging. Um, and, you know, 20, what do you say, 25 charge stations yeah. on the whole site. A combination of the 350 kilowatts we're on, there's a, some Tesla superchargers as well. Yeah, super interesting. But we're going to tuck into our little picnic and hopefully, with a bit of luck, I don't think that car's going to take very long to charge at 350, well, 150 kilowatts. But yeah, at all. quite hungry. But it's also good, I like how there's like workspaces. So yeah, yeah. if I there's am on the road, there's those... Know, the little, little pods, pods, little office pods that you can book. Um, yeah, it's, it's just wicked, absolutely wicked here. I think you've lucked out though, because I don't think I can't find the exercise bike, so otherwise I was going to get you on the exercise bike to kind of, you know, pay for the charge. Um, and then, what did he say, it was 45p a kilowatt, I think, yeah, they said, um, that I'm going to be paying. So it'll be interesting to see how much that costs to charge up, um, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah. So we've used the facilities, had some food, had a drink, and we've come back down. So we've been charging the car for 47 minutes, and it's now at 95% charge. So. I've gone beyond the 80% I thought I was going to aim at. What's really, really interesting is when we first put the car on charge, it was charging at 150 kilowatts, which is actually a little bit more than the stated capability of this car. But on these types of videos, I often say you don't really want to go beyond 80 kilowatts in public charging infrastructure. And the reason is, as you go beyond 80 kilowatts, the charge rate slows down. This now is only charging at 35 kilowatts because it's now pretty much topped up completely but yeah we've put in 61 kilowatt hours of charge into the car so 95 percent charge it's pretty good and then we'll find out how much it's cost me in a moment but yeah. i'm actually i'm actually there's someone on their way to say hello to me from cooper norwich so we're just going to leave it on charge and wait till it, to get to 100 percent, and then get in the car and head off home but yeah, that's wicked That was so easy. That was so easy. Absolutely ridiculous. Now I'm going to zero this. Oh, right. there we go. So that's zeroed. Um, we need to put your house in to the old uh, satellite navigator. So, um, 100 miles now is stating 300. And f sorry, 100 percent charge. Three, 304 four. miles. Interesting. It was a bit higher than that this morning. Drive profile range. Range. There we go. Start, off we go. Well, that's reverse. We don't want to drive, we don't want to back <laughs> into the. There we go. So, on the way, on Eva, let's see what. <coughs> now, I'll tell you what, straight away, the throttle's so much more dead on that just to kind of like be more damper. efficient. 
No, just as in it doesn't have the the response when you put your foot yeah. down. It's not as zippy. But then that's to be expected. Oh, nice tie can. Don't back out. Don't back out at me, mate. Thank you very much. Nice colour. So, thank you, grid sir. That was yeah, wicked. Yeah, that was really good. So that for me, right? That is what public charging should mm. look like. Loads of bays, super quick. Now, at the moment, because of my bad, I don't know how much that charge cost me, but by the time I edit this video, I will. So I'll put it, yeah. in, a, I'll put it in a banner below how much that charge cost me. But we and reckon, so you can do some maths. What was it, 65 kilowatts, and it was 45p a kilowatt. So we can kind of work it out. Quick, get your, get your calculator out. <laughs> Roughly twenty nine pounds. Twenty nine pounds. And that and lunch cost us twenty three. <laughs> was it? Yeah, that is the problem. <laughs> that is the problem. <laughs> Whenever you go like that, you go. Oh, I'll have some coffee and I'll have uh, um, uh, you know soft drink and yeah. So so that's but you have to factor that yeah. in. That is very very close to um, how much our lunch cost. Yeah. And actually, probably, if you added those two together, that's how much it would have cost in petrol. Pet petrol, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, we are now, we're a good chunk of the way in. We only have 70 miles left to go. Yeah. 62% of range, mm. 180 miles still to go, but do the magic. What's the, um, what's our miles per kilowatt hour showing? Uh, Let's have a quick it look. It was 3.8 when we stopped on the way there. It's, see, it's only 3.7. It's, it's not actually, it, so it's less in range mode than it was in Cupra mode. However, when we were in Cupra mode around here, yeah. it was like 3.5. Okay. Which makes me think it will go up to So maybe by the time four, we get there, hopefully. maybe we could get up to four. But it's not... It's not massively It's not more. massively more. So I'm starting to think, why don't you just drive it around in Cupra mode all the time and give it the big <laughs> yee-haw and then not worry about it. I mean, One mile before we get to your house, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long way. It's been it, a long way. It's been a long way and a long day, but very interesting one. Yeah. We are so a mile away. Um, still got thirty nine percent of battery charge, hundred nineteen miles. But let's hit the stats, my friend. Do right. do do your job. Hit the stats. The really interesting thing is, so we have. <laughs> oh, it's now. So we've been in efficiency mode, and and it's now three point eight miles per kilowatt, which is only. Point one more yeah. than when we drove there. to Norwich. Uh, our average speed is a little bit higher, but not a great deal. Only like four. Yeah, it's 56 miles per hour average. And 52 on the way yeah. there. So it's not really made a great deal of difference. Now, I've still got 20 odd miles to go to get home, yeah. and it's all on the efficiency mode will be better. Oh, hello, new GT3, hello. Um, the efficiency mode will be better on the kind of country style roads yeah. rather than on a dual carriageway. My conclusion might be just stick it in Cooper mode and have a laugh. Yeah. Because <laughs> it doesn't more make jumping. a massive amount of difference. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we'll get you home. Thank you. Thank you for coming along on the video. It's been dude. brilliant. Yeah. You, have you enjoyed I've it? I've had a great day. Good. Excellent. We've talked about all kinds of things. We've put the world to rights in a big way. <laughs> You've got a list of films you need to watch. Yeah, I've got a list of films. Excellent. Um, but yeah, no, thanks for coming on the channel, dude. Um, right, we'll get you home. And then uh, stay tuned because I'll get home and then conclude the video. Well, after ten and a half hours, we are back home at the barn. And I have to say, that was a fascinating day. Massive thanks to Ben, by the way, for keeping me company. My summary of this car, I'm so impressed with it. I wanted one before, I want one even more now. I feel fresh as a daisy. The ride is so smooth. It's a quiet car to, to drive in. Um, all the technology, there's a few things. The, um, the, the infotainment system is a bit fiddly, to be fair. Um, to get into some of the menu options, as I said, that little haptic buttons on the steering wheel are a bit of a pain. Let me just back up. However, the the way this car's performed, the statistics. So, let me just kind of summarise. So, we've uh, 204 miles a journey back. I ended up with a 3.8 miles per kilowatt hour. Um, on the way there, it was 211 miles. Uh, 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour but interestingly the way there we arrived with 22% charge left 65 miles and that was in Cooper mode now I've got 30% battery left 86 miles so 
the range extender function does give you more range. I've got, you know, another 8% uh, of battery and, you know, a good chunk more miles. I would just be tempted to stick it in Cooper mode and drive it uh, and enjoy the car. But one thing I would say in summary is I, I didn't do a lot of aggressive driving down B roads, which would consume the battery more. But on the whole, a brilliant day. That's how an EV range test should go. That infrastructure at GridServe is so impressive. The car charged before we even knew it, it had done 100% um, and filled its battery in like 47 minutes or something. Absolutely amazing. Put in the comments below, what do you think of that one? But absolutely fascinating, fascinating test. But I am very tired and very shabby. I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film. You take care, guys. Drive safe.